I now invite Mrs. Vanessa Jones, Associate Head, to read the citation for Mr. Nigel Mansell. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduands and graduands guests, I'm delighted to introduce to you Nigel Mansell, OBE, CBE, to this award ceremony here in the ancient Cathedral of Worcester at the graduation ceremony of the Institute of Sport and Exercise Science. To say that it is going to be a challenge to summarize the achievements of Nigel Mansell in approximately six minutes would be an understatement. But I hope I'm able to do justice to an extraordinary person who we are honored to welcome to this special occasion. Nigel Mansell is one of the most famous, successful British Formula One racing drivers of our time. He raced over 15 years at the highest level, winning a number of Grand Prix and the Formula One World Championship in 1992. He is renowned for his determination and daring, making him one of the most exciting racing drivers to watch in his era. He was born in Borton, near upton on in Worcestershire, the third of four children. The loving and supportive family background provided by his parents, Eric and Joyce, helped to nurture his love of sport. His competitive and determined spirit was evident from a very early age. He enjoyed tennis and athletics, captains his school football and cricket teams, and even turned his hand to chess. However, it appears that his love for speed and racing evolved from his mother, who was renowned for, his, her, for her first fast driving, and his father, who as a senior engineer at Lucas Aerospace, raced in the local karting scene. As many famous racing drivers before him, his first involvement in motorsport was in karting. He decided at the age of eight years old that he was going to be Formula One world champion, but quickly realized that it was not going to be quite as easy as he thought. Having pestered his father into letting him race, he started with a cart powered by a lawnmower engine, which cost a mere 25 pounds. His first official race at Edge Hill, entered illegally because he was underage, was probably not the debut he anticipated. As he tried to accelerate down the straight, he suddenly lost power. The highly technical reason for this? His engine had fallen off. <laughs> Maybe it was not the most auspicious start to his career, but that experience in no way deterred or hindered him. And he ended his karting career in his late teens with eight championship titles. From this point, we have a catalogue of achievements and also some life-threatening accidents, which rather than put him off, seem to galvanize him even more. The resilience and determination to succeed was truly testing in another way as well, as Nigel self-funded his early career, initially with the help of his father, where Christmas and birthday presents were often spare engine parts or tires for his cart. But as he progressed to working his way through um, the motor racing ranks of Formula One and then Formula Three, the financial challenges inevitably grew. He studied engineering at Matthew Bolson College in Birmingham with a fully funded apprenticeship with Lucas Aerospace. And pooling his earnings um, from his engineering job with those of his wife, Roseanne, he eventually bought the Formula Ford car to take his next step towards a Formula One career. In his very first season, Nigel won six out of the nine races he entered. Eventually, sponsorship and a new car followed, and then the most horrific accident at Brands Hatch, where he broke three vertebrae in his neck, paralyzing his arms and his legs for a period. Doctors told him recovery would be six months, and that he would never race again, and probably never walk. Seven weeks later, he was back on the grid, in his car, wearing a neck brace. At the end of that season, 1977, he emerged as the championship winner, having won 33 out of the 42 races that he had started. His progress to Formula 3 and then to Formula 1 was inevitable. Under the guidance of Colin Chapman, who spotted his talent and potential, 
He progressed to his Formula One debut in Austria in 1980, driving for Lotus. What followed was a highly successful 15 years at the top of Formula One, where he also drove for Williams, Ferrari and McLaren. He recorded 31 Grand Prix wins, 59 podium places, 32 uh, pole positions and 31 fastest laps. He was crowned Formula One Drivers' Champion in 1992, but was unlucky, hugely unlucky, not to have won the World Championship in 1986, an exploding tyre costing him a race finish and the championship by a single point, and in 1987, where he suffered a back injury halfway through a season he was leading. His British fan base was enormous, and he became the People's Champion, winning at Brands Hatch in 1985 European Grand Prix, 1986 British Grand Prix, before successes at Silverstone and impressive three times, 1987, 1991 and 1992. The roar of the crowd as he flew round the circuit was something to behold. The fastest moustache in the world as he was affectionately known. I know, I was there on annual family holiday at some of those Grand Prix. The most unique achievement, however, was that when he retired the first time from Formula One in 1992, having won the Drivers' Championship that year, he transferred to IndyCar Racing in America, and his first season, and in his first season, became the world champion, thus holding two world championships at the same time. He is the only person ever to have achieved that. This was truly testament to his incredible and versatile driving ability, tenacity and self-belief. Nigel was tempted back to Grand Prix circuit in 1994 before finally hanging up his racing gloves in 1995. Not quite true. Post-retirement from Formula One, he managed to extend his racing repertoire by competing in a British Touring Car Championship a Le Mans, and win both the 2005 and 2006 Grand Prix Masters Series races. Quite rightly, in 1986 and again in 1992, he was awarded BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Since retiring from his motor racing career, he has more time to invest with his extensive youth charity work, something he has always been passionate about. Since 1999, he has been president of the UK Youth, a leading national charity supporting over 750,000 young people by helping them to raise their aspirations, gain life skills, resilience, realize their potential, and have their achievements recognized through an innovative range of accredited education programs and activities. In addition to his work, as president of this charity, Nigel Mansell has been the sponsor of Team UK Youth, a professional cycling team representing the work and values of a leading youth charity. The cycling team grew out of a 13-day, 1300 mile charity ride organised by Mansell in the summer of 2012 to raise awareness of the UK youth centenary. Although the organisation's programmes extend beyond sport, its nationwide bike club, run in conjunction with CTC and Continue, and Nigel Mansell's love of cycling made, him the made the team a natural fit for the charity UK Youth. The team competed at a level below the Grand Tours, usually focusing on UK-based races. His interest and work with young people to help realise their potential and achieve their aspirations sits comfortably with his own experiences. He is also president of a charity, Dream Away, which is based in southwest of England. This charity aims to send local people of all ages with physical and learning difficulties on holidays and day trips. Alongside this, he is also patron of the Jersey Driving for Disabled charity and of St. Brillade's Youth Project. In addition to all of this, he is a keen golfer, playing to a handicap of 2.9, is a qualified pilot for both airplanes and helicopters and has been a special police constable for over 25 years. In 1990, he was awarded an OBE. 
1993, he was awarded a Doctor of Engineering at Birmingham University. And in 2012, he was the recipient of a CBE. What a list of achievements. And what an impact he has made in so many ways. A few weeks ago, Nigel was back in the spotlight of Formula One when the Mexican Grand Prix organize, organizers named, him, named the final corner of their upgraded circuit after him, 23 years after he won a Grand Prix there. To still hold that respect from your peers speaks volumes. However, the drive, vision, ambition, and tenacity he now brings to his work with youth charities makes him an outstanding role model for young people. Nigel has always been supported and supported by his close family, his children Chloe, Leo and Greg, and of course his wife Roseanne, who we are delighted has joined us on a suspicious day. Pro-Chancellor, on behalf of Academic Board, I present to you Nigel Mansell, OBE, CBE, for the award of Doctor of Science. to take an emotional pill. <laughs> Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduands and graduands guests, wow. Briefing is everything, ladies and gentlemen. I was told it's going to be a small accompanying people of about 10, so this is quite impressive. <laughs> I've got my helmet on, that's why I put this on. May I first thank Vanessa Jones in the first instance for delivering such a wonderful citation to me. As she said, I have been recognized on a number of occasions throughout my career with accolades and decorations, obviously including two most important ones from the Queen, Order of the British Empire and the CBE, the Commander of the British Empire. And I'm truly humbled and honored, especially to be here today at Worcester Cathedral, which is close to where I was born, at home above a tea room, to receive my Doctor of Science. Very special indeed, and thank you so much. And even more meaningful because my uh, old CEO of uh, UK Youth, John Bateman, is such a trusted and dear friend, and to uh, have him give me this honor today brings tremendous feeling for it, as you can tell from my voice. First of all, I'd like to say is uh, everyone who's received uh, congratulations and their achievements, stand up, and I'd like to applaud you all for all the hard work that you have done. Believe me, your journey is just starting, so many congratulations. And uh, we all set out on journeys, and my life has been quite strange and quite funny at the same time. And you might say, well, how can he say that? Well, adversity is an incredible thing. And when I was going down the straight at Paul Ricard in the 80s, when we didn't have the safety standards of today, I had a rear tire blow at about 220 miles an hour, which wasn't too bad, because we actually link our subconscious brain to our conscious brain so we slow speed down. That's why we can be such uh, quick uh, drivers around the circuit. So anyway, the tire blew, turned me right uh, straight into the armco and the front wheel folded back and hit me on the head and I went, oh, goodness gracious me, this is not very good. <laughs> and obviously it gave me quite a severe headache. Now in those days, um, it is quite funny because the gurneys on the helicopters used to be outside the helicopter, so when they were flying me unconscious to the hospital um, down in Nice, I woke up at about 1,000 feet flying through the actual sky and the clouds, and I was thinking, I've really done it this time, Nigel. This is, <laughs> this is not a cool thing, and I really thought I'd passed over, and it was pretty scary, and it was cold as well. It was really cold out there. But the thing is, you always bounce back. That's the most important thing. So we set out our journeys, and as I said, life is funny at some times, and you set some goals, and you hope to fulfill a few of these at least. From flying jets around the world for 30 years, because I never trusted the pilots, and I flew helicopters as well, 
I'm working throughout the world with the police. I've been affiliated with the police for a very long time, so I've done a lot of work around the world with them. And I also had a part-time job, which was wonderful. My part-time job was being a taxi driver. And obviously, my taxi was a bit faster than some of the others, so then that, <laughs> that developed into a Formula One contract, which was quite funny. And I enjoyed that, and um, obviously, I found it very rewarding, very, very fulfilling. And um, obviously, it's great to actually achieve some of your ambitions. And I put that as an education of life, everybody. Education of life. The thing I want to share with you quickly as well is, is this ability to sh slow speed down. You can do that whether you're a sportsman or not. It's programming the mind like I did coming here today. This is a huge supply, surprise and what a pleasant one. But the fastest speed I've ever done on the ground is 250 miles an hour at Indianapolis with a five car tow going down the straight. But 250 miles an hour to us, when we're concentrating really hard, we can slow that speed down to between 30 and 40, 45 miles an hour. So we have time to get in the corner, change the gear, go around, brake, and all the rest of it. And that's really good. Except when you're following a five-car tow and you turn into the corner, you're in dirty air, and it doesn't turn in. And then you're looking at a concrete wall going 250 miles an hour. So that wakes you up. I have to say that I've been uh, privilege to look at life from so many different angles, different ways which has not only been exciting but an amazing demographic for myself. From being awarded stars on the streets of different countries to halls of fame in America, Canada and England, to all the countries throughout the world that I've been blessed and been able to work in, working with so many great people, helping and being part of so many absolutely fantastic charities. I have to say my biggest goal in life, though, has been to help and assist a charity called UK Youth. As president and having an organization of some upwards sometimes of 46,000 volunteers and 5,500 youth clubs throughout the country, we actually reach all these children year in, year out. And to be part of this charity is incredibly humbling and satisfying at the same time. In finishing, I'd like to share something very special with you. In sport and in life, we have a little saying that basically, if you have to think, it's already too late. And if it's not too late, then you are too slow. We never get our time back, and that's why we must embrace the opportunities that we have. Don't waste that opportunity as you go through life. Like here. We invest in the future of our children. Education is one of the most precious gifts in the world which empowers us to make better life choices. I would just like to sincerely thank you all again for the honor here today on receiving this Doctorate of Science. Thank you all so much. And one special thing I will share with you to finish that I have learned throughout my whole life that you never get this minute this second back. Please embrace yours. Thank you.